The Texas heat is in full effect today, but I've got some bills to pay, so it's time to get to the garage and start flipping. Let's turn some lemons into lemonade. Today on Lemons to Lemonade, I'm unlocking my recession proofing secrets for lasting success in my furniture business. Welcome in, I'm glad you're here. On today's video, I'm flipping a solid wood dresser I picked up from Facebook Marketplace. This guy is in really great shape and has no damage at all, which will drastically reduce my work time on this. So once I give him a good clean with some simple green degreaser, we can start flipping. This leads me into tip number one, focus on quality and value pieces. I'm being a little more picky these days with picking up those particle board MDF type items, and I'm trying to find good quality manufactured pieces that are possibly solid wood that will last people a long time. People are still willing to pay for items that they can get plenty of use out of and that are not seen as so disposable. And that's exactly why I chose this dresser for today's flip. hardware today has got to go. I know some of you get really mad at me because I don't like some of the most of the hardware on my pieces, but this is a hard pass. We're going to find something else. One of the main reasons I usually change out my hardware is to just stay relevant and appealing to my customers. I'm constantly looking at interior design websites and magazines for color trends and doing my best to stay up to date with the changing demands that are in my Dallas market. That way, the dated pieces that scream 1970s or 1980s when I pick them up end up having beautiful curb appeal by the time I list them on Facebook Marketplace. Or at least that's what I'm aiming for. After a little deliberation, I hate this base enough that I've decided it definitely needs to go, but it's gonna be a little trickier than I had hoped. Normally I can just remove some screws or a little wood glue and it comes right off. This one is gonna require a lot more than that. Truth be told, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm hoping it turns out great. I know not everyone feels comfortable removing the bases off of their pieces of furniture that they're selling, but if you're able to do this, it could be the difference in price between an extra $100 to $200 for your selling point. So if I feel like it's really going to elevate the piece as it will with this one, I'll do whatever I can to make it work. And a small disclaimer, it does help if you feel comfortable with power tools or have someone that is able to help you that is comfortable with them because sometimes these bases require it. Now that we've got the base off, I'm gonna go ahead and sand the top of this just for a little bit of added detail, make it look just a little different. I still don't know what kind of vibe this is gonna have. It's obviously a very Southwestern dresser, but if it stays that way in the end, I'm really not sure right now. But I'm gonna start off by sanding this top. The edges along here are solid wood, so I don't have to worry about that, but this middle piece is made of veneer, so I'll just have to go a little slower with a little higher grit to make sure I don't burn through the top of this. I did a little test patch on the veneer and the factory finish on top was a lot thicker than I had anticipated. So I was able to start with a 120 grit sanding pad to a 180 to a 220 for a smooth finish on the top. Mm -hmm. 
Next, I'll use my surf prep sander to give everything a good scuff sand and smooth down the hardware holes that I filled with some wood fill. A few weeks ago I did a live on my YouTube channel for my followers where I painted this dresser. I used Wise Owl 1 Hour Enamel in the color Jet Black. This is an all-in-one paint that does not require a primer or a top coat and dries to a diamond hard finish. I also gave my viewers a little behind the scenes sneak peek of where my compressor stays in its little soundproof box so I don't bother my neighbors. I showed all my settings and talk about the uh, paint gun that I use. So if you're interested in catching that, you can still watch it. I'll link that live video below. Tip number four is to control your costs and manage your inventory. I find it really handy to use all-in-one paints that are good quality and it reduces the amount of products that I need to buy and the supplies I need to use to put them on with. So a good all-in-one paint that acts like a primer and a top coat as well as having super rich colors is a win-win for good quality and less supplies. My drawers are prepped and ready to paint. I use some two inch thick tape on the sides. I don't like to wrap my drawers all the way around. Um, it's one of those projects that I just hate to do. So I've kind of cheated a little bit by using this thick tape on the sides. And then I do the pizza box trick as I go around the top, which you'll see in a second. I waited three hours between coats and it took two coats for full coverage.
For the top of this, I really want to take some of the yellow orange tones out of it so it looks kind of rustic, but and I want to highlight the wood grain that's on there. So I'm going to be using a performance series stain by Minwax. This is a water-based stain and it comes in the color birch bark, which is kind of like a paint wash that's going to help make it more neutral and give it a creamy look, but still pop out some of that grain look so it gives it more of that rustic vibe that I'm going for. I prefer the stain look on certain dressers versus a paint wash because I want the wood grain to sort of like have a moment and I feel like when I use a paint wash that it takes away from some of that wood grain look because it washes it out so much. But with these performance series Minwax stains, I find that it helps highlight the wood yet take out the yellow tone. So I've been using a lot more of these lately. I found these chunkier feet on Amazon. I think these are gonna be the perfect balance between the heaviness of the top of this dresser and what the lades need to look like. So let's get these on. I used the same Minwax stain that I did on the top for these feet. I paid 25 bucks for these feet off Amazon and even though they're an extra add-on for this dresser, like I mentioned earlier, just by removing the base, it's going to up my price point by $100 to $200. So I know in the long run, these are going to be covered and they'll really help elevate this dresser to the next level. I found this great hardware on Amazon. It's got that perfect rustic vibe that's gonna go great on this dresser and just help blend in and make the black paint sort of the star of the show, which is what I'm trying to do. So normally I would apply these with my uh, dresser template that helps me make the holes for the hardware. But because this dresser has some cutouts in it, I can't get this to work. So I'm going to have to do another trick and I'll show you how you can fix this if you can't use this on your dresser. Even though I love my hardware hold template, if you don't have one of those or it won't work, there's an easy workaround for this. So I take some painter's tape, I lay it flat and then I place my hardware on top of it. I'll use a pencil to poke through the holes where the screws are supposed to go. And then once you remove the tape and line it up in the center of your drawer, you should be able to make perfect pilot holes every time. Number five, build customer loyalty. Whomever purchases this dresser is gonna go home with a small sample of the paint that I used and written instructions on cure time as well as best cleaners to use for this for long lasting durability. Developing a strong relationship with my customers and providing exceptional service for them encourages repeat business and happy and loyal customers are more likely to continue purchasing from you even during difficult times because you know 
you put out a quality product each time. Let's take one more look at this funky dated dresser. It didn't take very much to turn this frog into a prince. Who knew that that orange dated wood could turn into something so unique and beautiful? I list all my pieces on Facebook Marketplace and I have a feeling that this one won't be around for very long. Let me know if you found any of my tips helpful today and feel free to fill me in on what you're doing this year to help recession proof your business. If you learned something or like what you've seen, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. I try my very best to respond to every single comment that you all leave for me. I appreciate them all and I'm thankful for your support. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.